And let's take our Bibles tonight and open them to the book of Ezekiel chapter 12. And we're going to be in verses 17 through 20 tonight. Ezekiel chapter 12, verses 17 through 20. Ezekiel has been asked of God to do incredible things that very few other prophets were ever asked to do. Not only was he called to speak to Israel, but he was also called to be quiet to Israel and to act out God's word to them in living drama. You've heard about people that you know that bring a lot of drama in your lives. Ezekiel certainly brought drama to Israel, but it was drama through the Lord. And tonight we're seeing him call of God to do that again as he is to dramatize Israel's anxiety. Let's look here in verse 17 at what happens here. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, eat your bread with trembling and drink your water with shaking and anxiety. Then say to the people of the land, this is what the Lord God says about the residents of Jerusalem in the land of Israel. They will eat their bread with anxiety and drink their water in dread, for their land will be stripped of everything in it because of the violence of all who live there. The inhabited cities will be destroyed and the land will become a desolation. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Let's go to him in prayer. Father, as we bow before you tonight, we come to you, Lord, as a people that often have far too much anxiety and fear and worry in our hearts over the things occurring in our lives. And we are often blinded by these things to try to seek control of them ourselves instead of looking to you. And Lord, as you've revealed to me as this sermon was being prepared, it's, it's not just a few of us here. This seems to be a nationwide problem that is growing. So I pray that you would teach us tonight your word regarding things like anxiety and fear and stress that we would truly be light to this world through your truth and be able to share, Lord, the calm peace that comes from knowing you and following you as Lord to the world around us. Bless us, I pray in this word and help us, Lord, to be a blessing of glory and praise to you tonight. And we pray these things in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. If you are like me, anxiety, fear, worry are all emotions you experience from time to time. I'll never forget a few months ago, I had this weird skin thing pop up on my chest. It was diagnosed as some kind of mole, but when it popped up, I was absolutely convinced that that thing was going to kill me. See, we, we got on Google, you see, and we, we looked up what this thing looked like. And without a doubt, it was some weird type of melanoma deal. And, uh, and it just popped up kind of overnight like a big, giant blood blister. And, uh, yeah, I popped it a few times. I didn't look real happy about that. But I was worried. I was stressed. I was in anxiety. Maybe you feel the same way going to the dentist. Maybe you feel the same way getting a root canal, going through surgery. And if you're here tonight and you're cool as a cucumber, nothing shakes you, nothing bothers you. Maybe it would if your kids were going to an oncologist to get something examined. Maybe with school starting, there's a little bit of anxiety about the first day of school. I may or may not have a child in my family that may or may not be starting at Monroe Central, and he may or may not be nervous about the first day of high school. A lot of worry, a lot of stress, a lot of anxieties come into our lives, and it's not just us. As I was preparing this sermon, I found that within just the last couple of months, Major media outlets. It began with the Wall Street Journal. It was carried there from ABC and CBS News on the increase of anxiety in our nation. They even listed such stars as Beyonce, Adele, and Demi Lovato. I know two of the three of those. They, they were suffering from anxiety. And the rise of it all brought one 
NBC News reported to state that we have entered, quote, America's age of anxiety. The media reports that the reason for our increasing anxiety can be found in our constantly being inundated with information. I got to confess to you, I'm behind the times on that one. There was a lady at the nursing home today that I was speaking with, and she said, I am so glad they found that girl in the river. And I said, oh, me, me too. <laughs> yes. And then I thought, I did not hear about that whatsoever. Uh, but she found out about it. It may have been from a while back, but she knew the information. We walk around on our phones. There's more, there's more news on our phones than like in all of the newspapers produced in a day in our country. And we just sit around and flip and scroll and flip and scroll and Oh, look at this. Somebody said the other day they, they found a shark in the Ohio River. Yeah. You read you heard you read that. That's too much information for us. Okay? Where? That, <laughs> I think it was around Clarington. Be careful that photograph there. But you know you've got too much information going on. When fake information comes out and people start to believe it. We've got to be careful of that. And the other part of it is, they say we haven't quite recovered from the Great Recession that happened a few years back. And that's what's causing all of this anxiety upon us. The Bible, however, presents a very different perspective on why we experience anxiety and fear and worry in our lives. Looking to our scripture tonight, we find that anxiety arises when we are committing sin and we have no confidence in God. That's the hard truth of it. Now, I know you may be saying, Pastor, this is a bad thing. This is not good at all if even you experience anxiety. Hey, I agree. I agree with you. It isn't good, and it is sin, and we need to have complete confidence in God to usher out anxiety and live in His spirit of peace. But I prefer to look at it like this. Isn't it a whole lot better to have a cancer diagnosed so that it can be dealt with, especially if it can be treated very successfully upon finding it earlier than dealing with it later? That's the way I look at this. We're, we're looking into our souls. There's people like me, maybe like you, and we're saying, we've got this in us. This is our sin. This is our problem. And the good news is there is a successful treatment. And that successful treatment is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. I want to share with you tonight by looking at two points from our scripture what this treatment is. And we'll begin here by looking at first the causes of anxiety. Our Lord calls Ezekiel once again to act out in front of the people what their lot in life is going to be like after the Babylonians get through with them. The Babylonians are going to come and they're going to demolish their entire existence. Ezekiel is told by God to eat his bread and drink his water, one of the most basic activities of life in complete anxiety and dread. Like a earthquake sort of shut up in his bones, he is to tremble, he is to quake violently while he eats and he drinks. And God says he's to do this to show the people how it will be for them when Babylon does their work. And the cause of their anxiety lays in this. God says in verse 19, they will eat their bread with anxiety and drink their water in dread for their land will be stripped of everything in it because of the violence of all who live there. Inhabited cities will be destroyed and the land will become a desolation. Friends, our God, is a truly impartial judge. Where sin is found, he will deal with it. It doesn't matter to him if it's Sodom and Gomorrah or if it is Jerusalem. If it is found, he will deal with it. Now, a lot of 
Israelites believed they were safe, you see. So long as they were behind the walls of Jerusalem, so long as they were around the temple in Jerusalem, they thought they were protected from all harm, even the harm of God. And God is telling them here, that is not the case at all. Babylon is going to come through those walls like a knife through butter. One theologian has said that this passage serves as a solemn warning to those who call themselves his people and consider themselves cultured, but express disrespect for God through violent and inhuman conduct. That's sin. And whatever form it takes, it is the cause of our anxieties as we listen not and rest not in God's good hands and wisdom. And we decide instead to go on our own. We've got this. We'll handle it. We can fix this. This is in our control. As it is written in Psalm 38, 18, I confess my iniquity. I am full of anxiety. Why? Because of my sin. It doesn't get any clearer than that. When anxiety is working in our lives, we are simply not resting, trusting, following God as Lord of our lives. Now consider here the painful truth that anxiety is arise because of unbelief. And that should not surprise us because all sin is unbelief. And you might be sitting there being like, whoa, Pat, hey, whoa. Careful now, Pastor. You know, we're all Christians here. I don't doubt that. We don't like to attach the term unbelief to ourselves. We're all good Baptists here, right? We certainly don't want to compare that because, you know, once they've always saved all that stuff, so how would this mess? Listen, what I'm talking about here is a situation where you and I as Christians, you and I as believers in God, we are still looking to God and saying, Lord, we believe, help our unbelief. That's what I'm talking about. It's not the unbelief of the heathens who have absolutely no concept of God at all. It's the unbelief of us who have a spiritual warfare between our flesh and the spirit that we would follow Jesus or follow ourselves. By coming to him, we have been born again in his spirit. We completely believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, yet we still fall to the flesh, and oftentimes we do not trust him as we should. All sin is unbelief. And that's where anxieties arise. When we have no confidence, no deep abiding trust that God can and or will bring us through a situation, our circumstances seem so much larger than our God at the time. In Matthew 6, Jesus described people in this condition as a people of little faith. They've got faith. It's just little faith. He preached about how God feeds the birds of the air and how you can't add anything to your life by worry and how the wildfires of the field grow more beautiful than Solomon's glory. And then Jesus said, if that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you? You have little faith. Without complete belief and trust, in God's will and God himself to provide for our every need and carry us through our every distress sin enters in and with it unbelief that gives rise to anxiety in our lives. And these anxieties, what they do is they take sin and multiply it. Anxiety is like the greatest sin multiplier ever. Listen to what a pastor named John Piper said about this. Very, very astute observation here. He says, stop for a moment and think how many different sinful actions and attitudes come from anxiety. Anxiety about finances can give rise to coveting and greed and hoarding and stealing. Anxiety about succeeding at some task can make you irritable and abrupt and surly. 
anxiety about relationships can make you withdrawn and indifferent and uncaring about other people. Anxiety about how someone will respond to you can make you cover over the truth and lie about things. So if anxiety could be conquered, a lot of sins would be overcome. That is entirely correct. And I look at that list and I'm like, yeah, that is correct because I have done that in my life. But friends, that anxiety, that fear, that worry, it can be conquered. And it can be conquered by the power and presence of Christ working in our lives. Now we see this secondly tonight as we look at the cure for anxiety. My brothers and sisters, it is absolutely shocking how many remedies are out to handle our anxieties? It's amazing. I didn't realize how, how deep this rabbit hole went until I was preparing this sermon. You've got, of course, therapy through meditation. You know, get deep within your thoughts. Find your inner zen. All of that stuff, okay? Meditate. That's one. Then you have psychotherapy. That's another. And of course, the last one and the biggest one is what? Medication. Why well, worry about all that other stuff? Just take this pill. And in the Christian world, we have done a whole lot more to address anxiety than I ever thought. These are titles of actual Christian books. The Anxious Christian. Can God use your anxiety for good? A letter to my anxious Christian friends. And there's even good news for anxious Christians. It's all out. And I read blog after blog after blog after blog where people, Christians, were saying anxiety is not a sin. I don't guess they've ever read that. That's all I can say. Now, I don't know what is in all of those books that's supposed to help us with anxiety, but I do know what is found in this book, the Bible. And this book says that the cure for anxiety is found by laying them down and lifting them up. Give a lesson to God's word for the Apostle Peter in 1 Peter 5, 6. He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your anxieties upon him because he cares about you. That is a monumental verse. God is telling us here that it is our pride that often leads us to not know freedom from anxiety in this life. That's why he says, first thing you got to do, you humble yourself. You humble yourself before me. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because when we are in our pride, we, we don't think we need God. And we don't think we need help. But humbling ourselves to come to the point where we know that we cannot do anything in ourselves. Just as Jesus told us. Apart from me, you can do what? Some things? No, nothing. But with me, all things are possible. Humbling ourselves brings us to that point that we can jettison all the baggage of our cares and worries and frets and fears and anxieties at his feet that he can control our situation. And why can you trust him to do it? Why can you trust God to just give everything to him and just be like, I'm, I'm done with all of this. I'm, I'm before you, Lord. You are God. I am not. Here's my anxiety. It's because God says, I care about you. You bring your anxiety to him, he says, because he cares about you. Maybe somebody here tonight just needed to be reminded of that truth. He cares about you. He cares about me. Friend, if Jesus doesn't care about us, nobody does. Amen. But his cross testifies to us that he cares for us deeply. 
So deep, in fact, that he would give up his very life for us, suffering the hell we deserve, that we would be saved from God's wrath through him. His blood has forever written this message to us. I love and care about you. Man, I tell you, the lies we tell ourselves. <laughs> you want to know one of the greatest lies that runs through the church? I'm going to tell it to you anyway. The great, one of the greatest <laughs> lies that you will ever hear. And I don't think we even understand how prideful we are when we say this. But one of the greatest lies you ever hear is this. God will never give you more than you can handle. Lie. <laughs> That's a lie. God will never give you more than that. Well, hey, that's good, man. Tomorrow morning, Monday, I'm going to get up and I'm, I'm going to tackle this on my own. And at the end of the day, you're sitting there being like, I didn't make any progress. Things actually got worse, but man, I'm glad he'll never give me more than I can handle. <laughs> Perspective here for a moment. Romans 3, 23, you are dead in your trespasses and sins. If he can't give us more than we can handle, we needed to figure out how it is that we came to life without him. Because we can. And what God did say, I'll give you this one. What, what God did say, and maybe I'll, I'll give the benefit of the doubt that maybe somebody really mis misunderstood what Paul was saying. But Paul did say, God will never lead you into a situation, a temptation, without giving you a means of escape. That's why you can never say, Satan made me do it, and you can never say, God made me do it. I'll give you that one. But more than we can handle, are you serious? I can't get up and brush my teeth without him. <laughs> he cares for us. Therefore, we need not look elsewhere but him for our problems to find their solution. And whatever is burdening our hearts, we can lift up to him in a state of assured prayer. Listen carefully to what the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 4, 6. He says, be anxious about nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. How do we free ourselves from anxiety and worry and stress? We we cast them at Jesus' feet and we lift them up to Jesus' throne. And we lift them up to him in prayer. Believing, full, full hearted belief that Jesus cares about us, loves us, and will hear us. <coughs> I once heard a testimony from a brother who said he needed, if my memory serves correctly, I think it was $187. $187 he needed. And they searched for ways to make these, these ends meet. And it just wasn't happening. Wasn't that he didn't work? He didn't work. But hey, listen, hard times are something none of us are immune from, okay? And at the end of his rope, because it often, you know, we have to get to that point before we, we start looking up. He, he just prayed. He was like, God, if you want this paid for you, you're going to have to to provide.
fulfilled. He, he's already established that it is an unbelieving act to worry or fret or fear and have anxiety. And Jesus gives this awesome, incredible word at the end of that. He says, do not worry, then say, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles, the unbelievers, eagerly seek all of these things. For if your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Yeah, yeah, I saw a lot of heads. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that is absolutely right. We got enough trouble right now to worry about trouble tomorrow. This is incredible, though, isn't it? Jesus takes all of the worries that we can face in this life, and he makes a promise to us. God makes a promise to us. And he promises that if you will make him king over all those things giving you anxiety, he'll take care of it and he'll add to you all that you need. You have to seek his kingdom first. It's by making Christ king over your life that the way of peace and fulfillment and freedom arises above anxiety and it finds its cure through him. And to complete the process we have to believe and trust his word. This was the fatal fall of the Israelites. They abandoned the word of God, and therefore they abandoned God for their idols. That's exactly what we must avoid if we will be free from anxiety. The Bible says in Psalm 119.50, This is my comfort in my affliction that your word has revived me. And it certainly will every time. When we are anxious of the unknown, we can stem the tide of unbelief by remembering his word to us is, fear not, I am with you. When we are anxious about being too weak to confront our sin, we can remember his word, my grace is sufficient for you because my power is perfected in weakness. We can remember because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish for his mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And when you just need rest from the turmoil of your mind's anxious thoughts, hear him and trust him when he says, Come to me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. There's thousands upon thousands of reasons he gives us to forsake our sin and trust him and not live in anxiety, but in the power and freedom and victory of his presence in our lives. He has never failed you, has he, my friend? Has God ever let anybody here down? No, not once. And count on it, he never will. By looking to him by faith, we know that he is Lord. A man named Clive Staples Lewis, probably better known as C.S. Lewis. He wrote many, many books. Any of them are good, good for reading. I can recommend him without fear to anybody. But one, one of the favorites, I think, of we fanboys of Lewis is, is the Screw Tape Letters. And the Screw Tape Letters is, is a book about an older demon teaching a younger demon how to best deceive we Christians. And there's a chapter in the screw tape letters on anxiety. And the older demon tells the younger one, he says, there is nothing like suspense and anxiety for barricading a human's mind against the enemy. That was written specifically for Christians. Because what Lewis was saying was, when anxiety pops up in us, we put this wall around our minds to where we're looking to God and saying, why, or why this, why, 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 and doubts and fears and everything else. Christians do that, you see. 
And we, we never see the fact that it's probably our enemy doing it and that we have all the power necessary to fully combat. But when we look to God, we know there's nothing we can do and it leaves us helpless and anxious and fearful and fretting because our trust in him has been knocked down a few notches by the weakness of our own faith. So what must we do? We must take everything to Jesus always. We must cast it at his feet. We must submit to his rule over all of our lives, including our anxieties, and rely upon his word. Listen, my friends, it is not a sin. It is not a sin to feel the emotion of anxiety. It is a sin to not take it to God and rid ourselves of it by making Jesus king over our lives. Amen. So what anxiety do you need to take to him tonight? Do you need tonight to look to Jesus and put faith in him for eternal life? Do you need tonight to look to him now as your king and submit your whole life to his will that you can live the life he's given us, life more abundant and free? Let's put our hearts to him and pray now. Search me, O oh God. Know my heart. Try me and know what? My anxious thoughts. And let's give them to him tonight. For Christ is our cure. Father, thank you for your word that always draws us back to yourself. Thank you for the assurance, Lord, that you constantly give us that you love us and you care for us and you are with us and that you do not want us be burdened with the anxieties that this life presents. I pray for myself and I pray for everyone gathered here, Lord, that you would work and move in us through your Holy Spirit, that we would take what we have heard in your word tonight, and that we, Lord, would have our lives to live it and be transformed into what you want us to be. Lord, I pray especially for somebody here that is battling terribly with fearful thoughts, anxious thoughts, worry, and concern. Lift their burden now as they look to you and put you as first in their lives. Help us, God, we pray in Jesus' name.